Ingolstadt, I guess they see how this company is closing its doors and employees are crying foul. I'm Stacey Ashley. This underpass is a nightmare for cyclists. CTV News shows you why riders don't want to be ignored in the city's BRT plans. And I'm Jordan Witzel at the CTV Weather Center. An area of low pressure developing in the Colorado Rockies is set to bring a change in the weather pattern here in southern Manitoba. CTV News. Live from downtown Winnipeg with Gord LeClaire and Marilee Caruso. Breaking news tonight about one of the biggest stars in the world. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Reports tonight say the king of pop, Michael Jackson, has died. Jackson was rushed to a Los Angeles hospital this afternoon. With more now, here is ABC's Carla Wool. Michael Jackson liked to call himself the king of pop, and in his heyday, it was no exaggeration. He could sing, and boy, could he dance. Jackson performed his famous moonwalk for the first time on Motown's 25th anniversary special. He had been perfecting his act since the age of five when he would sing with his brothers in clubs around their hometown, Gary, Indiana. The Jackson Five soon came to the attention of Motown's Barry Gordy. The rest, as they say, is history. The Jackson Five consistently topped the charts in the 60s and 70s. They appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show and opened for Diana Ross and the Supremes. Michael eventually would go on to a solo career and superstardom, producing hit after hit. Thriller won eight Grammy Awards and holds the record for best-selling album of all time. In the video, his image morphed, and so did it in reality. In the song Black and White, Jackson seemed to tease the audience about the color of his skin. Over the years, Jackson's skin became lighter. He said it was from a disorder that destroyed the pigmentation of his skin. And his features changed, although he claimed to have had only two surgeries on his nose to help him sing better. While his popularity waned at home, he remained a hit overseas. In 1994, he surprised the world, marrying Elvis Presley's daughter, Lisa. They divorced after less than two years of marriage. Months later, he announced that Debbie Rowe was expecting the first of their two children. They married but never lived together and eventually divorced. Increasingly, it was Jackson's bizarre behavior, not his music, that drew headlines. In 2002, he dangled his nine-month-old son from the balcony of a German hotel. A couple of years later, Jackson gave an impromptu performance outside a California court where he was charged with molesting a 13-year-old boy. And one day arrived at trial wearing pajamas. He ultimately was acquitted and left the country. In interviews, Jackson talked about the price of superstardom, about how lonely it was. He said, it hurts to be me, pain that in the end, even the music couldn't stop. Are the world ABC News, Los Angeles. And CTV's John Hendricks joins us now. John, what's the immediate reaction to this shocking news? Well, it's decidedly mixed. People tell me that they will certainly always remember his music fondly, but many say they will never be able to forget his eccentricities and those allegations of molestation. With all the controversy around him, I think that that uh, definitely will hurt the legacy that he's had. Well, what do you think his legacy is? His weirdness towards the end of his life. He did make some dance moves legendary, and he'll always be remembered for that. So certainly a lot of mixed feelings, but one thing is definitely for sure, Michael Jackson will never be forgotten. John, you talked about uh, his legacy. Can you please tell us, I guess, uh, more about uh, the generation that spanned, of course, in his time as a celebrity? Well, as Carla mentioned in that piece, I mean, you're talking the Jackson 5 all the way through to his solo career. I mean, he was definitely an innovator, whether it was with his style of dance, which was imitated by so many artists like MC Hammer, for example, and then to his music, which has inspired a whole new generation of artists, like producer Neo, who is out there right now, who has openly said he found much inspiration from his music. So that's one of those reasons why Michael Jackson will continue to be remembered for many years to come. All right, thank you very much. CTV's John Hendricks reporting for us tonight. 
Another Manitoban has been diagnosed with the H1N1 flu virus and died. Manitoba Health says it was a child under 18 years old who had an underlying medical condition. It means three people who had H1N1 have now died. So far, Manitoba has 458 reported laboratory confirmed cases of H1N1. It is the first outdoor concert in Winnipeg since Edgefest in 1998, and that's 11 years ago. But uh, a freak storm last night had organizers scrambling. CTV's Caroline Bargoot uh, joins us now from Canada and Stadium. Caroline, what can you tell us uh, happened there? Well, Gord, the concert is scheduled for Saturday. To prepare for the big show, organizers have tiled this entire football field. But then, as you mentioned, a freak storm blew in yesterday. It only lasted a couple of minutes, but the wind was so strong, it picked up thousands of these tiles and it blew them around. But thankfully, about 100 volunteers came to the rescue. They're laying the groundwork for a big show. And they're doing it for the love of rock. And it'll be a lot nicer standing on white ground than dark turf. On Saturday, Winnipeg will play host to the Canadian debut of the Ohio-based rock concert, Rock on the Range. It's the city's first outdoor concert in 11 years. And it's you know, obviously important for it to go off without a hitch, but Mother Nature didn't want to uh, cooperate. Organizers say the work was nearly done. The entire field was tiled from that end of the stadium all the way to the end zone. And with 20 minutes of work left for the job to be complete, the storm hit, picking up thousands of tiles and moving them out of place. Where they once lay flat, thousands of tiles sit in heaps on the field and the hours of work it took to arrange them seemed in vain. And it was devastating to the people who had worked all day to see their work be picked up in about 10 minutes and thrown every which way. Organizers say it was just too much work to get done in time for the big show. And so the call for volunteers. They put in all this effort to put this down and then just to have it destroyed in a few seconds. Just like this past winter, hundreds of volunteers braved the cold to shovel the stadium for the upcoming Eastern semifinal. Winnipeg's kind of a good city for that. Go Winnipeg. It just talks about the community spirit and I guess how close that uh, this football team is to so many people and uh, we greatly appreciate it. As a thank you, volunteers will get to see the big rock show firsthand. It's a good concert to go to. And they are still putting the finishing touches on that stage. Again, the concert is set for Saturday. It is called Rock on the Range. There are 15 bands that are performing. The headlining act is Billy Talent as well. Rancid, Thornley, and Theory of a Dead Man will be playing. About 16,000 people can fit here, and I'm told there are lots of tickets still available. Sounds good. Thanks, Caroline. CTV's Caroline Bargut reporting from Canada in Stadium tonight. Police are investigating after shots were fired into a North Kildonan home. It happened just after 3 this morning at a home in the 200 block of McKay Avenue. It appears a window was shattered by the shot. Police say no one was injured. No word on any suspects. And just before noon hour, police surrounded a home on Victor Street. The tactical squad was executing a drug warrant. Armed officers first surrounded the house, then entered and brought one person out. There's no word tonight what, if any, charges were laid. Employees at a glass factory in the city are crying foul. Northwest Glass Products has closed its doors for good, blaming the shaky economy. But as CTV's Rochelle Legacy shows you tonight, employees say the timing of the closure is suspicious, as the company was on the verge of being unionized. But, um, I'd say for it's a nice day to enjoy the sunshine, but Rick Walsh and Glenda Carl would rather be spending it at work. But Wednesday night, both men found out their jobs at Northwest Glass Pro